All right, in this video, we're gonna start kind of introducing uh, slope intercept form, but before we get into that, we're gonna start graphing lines using the slope and using the y-intercept, okay? Uh, so in number one here, we're wanna, we wanna graph the line that has a slope given uh, that's negative two and a y-intercept that's given to us that is positive four, okay? So with that information, that tells us a few important things. So first off, the slope is negative two. So we need to remember that slope is rise over run, okay? We're gonna use that concept uh, when we graph this line in just a second, all right? So the slope is negative two. That means one of two things, okay? The slope could be negative two if we were dividing a negative two by a positive one, okay? Or the slope could be negative two if we were dividing a positive two by a negative one. All right, and we're gonna to go to the graph in just a second. I'm gonna show you why these two things matter. All right, finally, uh, before we graph, the y-intercept is four. And we need to understand, remember, that the y-intercept is the point on the graph that crosses the y-axis. And every point that's on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of zero. All right, we've gone over intercepts before, so you should remember that. So this point, zero comma four, has to be on the graph. So let's graph the line that has a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of four, okay? So the first thing we want to do, we're going to plot the y-intercept, okay? We can't use the slope until we have a point to go from, okay? So y-intercept's always going to be the first thing we plot, okay? Now, first thing we said was that the slope was negative two. Now, we said we could divide negative two by positive one, which means the rise would be negative two and the run would be positive one. So I could go down two and write one to plot a point, okay? And I can do that as many times as I need to. Remember, we're graphing lines, so that pattern has to continue forever, okay? Now, the other thing we said was that the rise could also be positive two over negative one. So we could also go up two, left one, and we could continue doing that over and over again okay, as long as we're on the grid here, all right? So we only need two points to graph a line, okay? Now, obviously, I've plotted, you know, seven or eight here, okay, but we're going to start with the y-intercept, and then we're going to use our slope, and we can go in either direction, and because the slope's negative, we can go down and to the right repeatedly, or we could go up and to the left re repeatedly. It accomplishes the same thing, okay? So again, we're graphing lines, so I want to kind of connect these dots Okay, so there's the graph of the line that has a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of four. All right, so let's move on to number two. In this case, we want to graph the line that has a slope of positive two-thirds and a y-intercept of negative one, okay? So again, first thing we need to remember, slope is rise over run, and the slope is two-thirds. Now, two-thirds two could be a positive two divided by a positive three, or it could be a negative two divided by a negative three. These would both... Uh, be equivalent to two-thirds, okay? So from the y-intercept, I could go up two and right three, or I could go down two and left three, just like we did in the previous example. The y-intercept's negative one, so we need to understand that that's the point zero comma negative one, all right? Let's move on to the graph and check this one out. So in this one, remember the y-intercept was negative one, and we're always going to start by plotting the y-intercept. Okay, our slope was two thirds, and we said that could be accomplished by going up two and right three. And again, we can do that repeatedly to create our line. Okay, or we also said that two thirds could be negative two or down two and left three, so negative two over negative three. Notice that continues the linear pattern here. So I can keep going negative two, negative three, down two, left three and so on, and that will continue forever, okay? So the graph that has a slope of two-thirds and a y-intercept of negative one should look like this, okay? We want arrowheads going in both directions because the line continues on forever, okay? Let's try number three. In number three here, the graph has a slope of zero. Now, hopefully that tells you something, okay? We've talked about what type of lines have a slope of zero before and a y-intercept of negative six, okay? So hopefully you remember a line that has a slope of zero is going to be horizontal or flat, okay? Uh, but we still can talk about it in terms of rise over run. Okay. You can get zero by dividing zero by any number. Now, I chose one and negative one here, um, but you could have chosen anything, okay? Because zero divided by any number other than zero is zero, okay? 
Uh, so our rise, we're not going to rise at all, and our run can be right any num any amount or left any amount. Okay. A y-intercept of negative six just means that our starting point is at zero negative six. All right. So let's go graph this one. Okay. So again, first we want to plot our y-intercept. So it's negative six. So from the origin, we're going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm going to stay blue this time. Slope is zero, so we said we're not going to go up or down any from there. Another thing we understand that a, a slope of zero just means we've got a horizontal line. You know, so it just means all the points are going to be along this horizontal. And we can plot as many as we need, okay? So the graph's going to be right through that horizontal there. And arrowhead going both directions, okay? So that's the graph of the line that has a slope of zero and a y-intercept of negative six. Let's try number four. So try, pause the video right now and uh, give number four a try and then come back and check your work, okay? All right, so in uh, this problem, we've got a slope of negative four fifths, again, rise over run, and you can get negative four fifths by obviously dividing negative four by five, or you could divide positive four by negative five. All right, so that's gonna help us with our rise and our run, okay? The y-intercept in this case is zero, so this line is going to go through the origin, okay? The y-intercept is zero. The x-coordinate has to have a coordinate of zero as well. All right, so let's go graph this uh, line. All right, so plot the y-intercept first. As always, we're going to go through the origin here, okay? Now, we said the rise could be negative 4, and the run could be positive 5. So we could go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, you can try that again. One, two, three, four down, and then right one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be right there on the edge, okay? Or we could do positive four, so up one, two, three, four, and then left one, two, three, four, five. And then I could do that again, one, two, three, four, and then left one, two, three, four, five. So that line would go right through there, okay? So we're going to go through what I've written up there. Don't worry about that. But again, notice the linear pattern. All the points should be in a row. If you ever try this and you don't get a linear pattern, then you've screwed up. You've used the slope incorrectly, uh, most likely. All right. So we just want to connect those dots as best we can here. All right. It's better if you've got a ruler. Again, arrowheads go in both directions because the line goes on forever to the left and forever to the right. And that's how you graph uh, lines using the slope and the y-intercept.